Hello everyone. Welcome to this additional little video series on how to use Blender. At this point, you might have watched the Blender 2.8 Fundamentals series, which goes over a lot of Blender's basic features. But as a newcomer to Blender or 3D art in general, it's one thing to know all the features of a software and another to use them in practice. In the following videos, I will show you how to apply this knowledge to create a simple character of your own in Blender 2.8 or 2.9. There will be some additional features and techniques across these videos, but the goal is really to stick to what is shown in the fundamental series. Just like the outline of those videos, we will start with modeling, then go on to shading and texturing, and finally start with lighting and rendering our final results. I will regularly show the videos on screen to check out where you can get more info on the features themselves. This way, I won't really have to repeat much of the fundamental lessons that were already shown. So let's just jump right in. So first off, we open Blender, of course, and I won't really go over the basic navigation and the interface of Blender. Watch the first three videos of the fundamental series for that. To create our character, we generally start with the blocking step. This step is to lay out the fundamental building blocks of what we want to create. So since we start the scene with a default cube, let's just build the character entirely around that just for fun. From here, it's about adding primitive objects with the add menu. Let's just add another cube for the face and subdivide the mesh in edit mode a little bit. From here on out, you can select and move around the vertices to form the basic face shape. Use Xmirror and X-Ray, which you can find in the header, to help you out with this step. You can also use a cube to add the wings and adjust the form in the same way. A plane is all you need for the tail feather, uh, cylinders for the feet and legs. You can also redefine the origin of an object in the right-click context menu to rotate these cylinders around a different point. This will make angling the leg joints a bit easier. Right now, the character is kind of intersecting with the ground level. So moving it up a little bit is a good idea to make it really stand on the zero point of the world. Now we have everything laid out, but it's still only one side. In the fundamentals, the modifiers were briefly mentioned, but barely used. Modifiers are an alternative way of modeling to the usual modeling manually and destructively in edit mode. Since modifiers are only really part of the mesh once you apply them, it's very easy to make changes at any point and keep the original mesh intact. As an example, let's delete one side of the face and add a mirror modifier in the modifier tab. This will mirror the geometry using a set axis across the origin point of the object. Of course, if you move your vertices around, it might still move onto the other side and not properly merge at the center anymore. For this, you can enable the option clipping, which will make geometry stick to the center. But be careful not to accidentally clip vertices or you will have to disable clipping again to make them unstuck. The other most essential modifier is the subdivision surface modifier, or subdiv in short. This divides your object and smooths the result to add more detail and definition. If your viewport is ever getting too slow because of all the divisions, there are separate sliders for the render and the viewport divisions. The optimal display toggle is also removing all of the new divisions from the wireframes to give a smooth and optimized view of your model. Using this modifier as a preview in edit mode, you can then easily define a smooth shape with a fraction of the geometry. Adding the mirror modifier to the wing 
Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work in this case, unless we change the origin and the rotation of the object so that it mirrors everything perfectly across to the other side. But there is a trick. You can assign a mirror object, which will then be used as the origin to mirror from. So you can click on the color picker icon and pick the cube in the center and the wing will appear on the other side of the cube. Repeat this process for the other objects and try the other modifiers if you want and experiment. With all of these new objects, it's time to organize the file a little bit. I'll move the light and the camera into a new collection and exclude it for now. You can also rename the objects and collections however much you want. 